Amen. May, may we take our seats. And so this next part of the program is very important because without these people, the service would not be possible. And who are these people? <laughs> yes, our women, definitely, who are leading the service today. But also, our first timers, you're that special. Without you, the service would not be happening. So if you're joining us here for the very first time, can you just stand on your feet so we can give you a warm Ebenezer welcome. <laughs>
So prepare your offering, dig into your socks, look everywhere. Make sure it's ready, because after that it's offering. Yes. Everywhere, search everywhere, under the chairs, everything. And prepare a powerful, yes. powerful offering as our woman makes her way to the front. Give them a clap offering, let's encourage them. <laughs>
is from Psalm 121. That reminds us that our helper is constantly at work for us. Amen.
prepare the way for the word.
the time to hear the word of God, to renew us, to enlighten us. So I want us to give a clap offering. This is the first time I do this actually. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous because if I do not do justice to this introduction, I don't know where I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> so I need to make sure I do justice to this introduction. Um, please join me as we put our hands together and welcome your chairman, my chairman, and my
in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, let's put our hands together for that. Wow. It is wonderful. The little that we have, we counted it worthy to give unto the Lord. You know, and another group of us also decided to contribute to change our laptop because when we go on YouTube, our sound is very, it's, it's not nice at all. And uh, by the grace of God, the last time the finance secretary spoke to me, we, we, they had raised 3,200 and something. Yes. Oh, let's, let's, let's Three thousand two hundred and something, but the laptop that they need is four thousand two hundred and ninety-nine. I don't know where the where the one real disappeared to. <laughs> I have no idea. It's four thousand two hundred and ninety-nine. You know, if you are attached to bless, so I think it's left with about thousand reals, give and take. Um, after church, if you are attached to to help, we just need thousand reals more to change the laptop for the, for the media. If you are blessed and you are attached to help, I want you to see uh, Reverend, Reverend Eric at her service, and then just give him your token. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Oh, let's put our hands together. Wow. So we yeah. are ready for the word of God. The word of God is, is so incredible. When you read the book of Acts, you know, the Bible is saying that, and I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among the saints. So as children of God, what builds us up and what makes us prosperous is the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, so as we are about to dive into the word of God, I want you to prepare your heart. I want you to close your eyes wherever you are as we say a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, these are your sons and daughters who have gathered under your feet to listen to you. Father, speak to them. Oh yes, touch their hearts. May we receive your engrafted word with faith and meekness. May our life be transformed because of an encounter we are having with you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I will pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Now, today we are continuing with our message of prosperity. You know, last, last week when I showed the calculator, some of the guys were saying that it is wrong. <laughs> but it is not wrong, amen. amen. Now, we are going to look at another principle that will help us in our journey of prosperity. And the scripture we are going to read, today we are going to preach, I am going to, last week I preached with uh, somebody from Ghana. You see, I'm not from Ghana, I'm from somewhere else. <laughs> um, so we, uh, one of our sisters from Kenya is going to help us to preach in Swahili. Hey, you are not happy, so you are trying. Yeah. Yeah. And she's from Korea. We're reading the Bible in Swahili for us. My God, what an international church. Yeah. In Swahili, so we are waiting for you, but in the meantime, I'll read it in this. Jeremiah chapter 29. Jeremiah chapter 29. The, the principle that we are going to look at today is, is very critical. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 1. He said, Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive to the priests, to the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 2. This happened after Jeconiah the king, the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. Verse 3. The letter was sent by the hand of Eleazar, the son of Shapa. Hey, the names there, I cannot pronounce them. So I'm skipping to verse 4. <laughs> I'm skipping. I'm skipping. It's just name, so you can put your name there. That says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, who I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem 
to Babylon. If you came with your own Bible, I know that now we are international, so we use phones and iPads. Just highlight the last part of verse 4. Go back there. He said that whom I, I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. We'll come back to this scripture. Verse 6. Verse 5. Yes. Verse 5. He said, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruits. It is my Kenyan friend ready, please. Is Pauline ready? Look for the scripture. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant their take, take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may increase and not diminish. Verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it for in its peace you will have peace. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, the word that is translated peace here is the Hebrew word shalom. Okay. It's the Hebrew word. I know there are churches that their greetings are shalom. And then the, the, the people respond shalom. Now, they use the word peace. Peace is not the only translation of shalom. In fact, shalom means wellness. It means welfare. It means prosperity. Hallelujah. And think about it. These were people that were in captivity. They had left their cities. They were the people of God. And the scripture says that God caused them to be taken away from their cities to another place. And the Bible says that they were captives. It means that they were held against their will. They were doing things that under normal circumstances they wouldn't have done by themselves. Hallelujah. Yeah. These were basically slaves. But the Bible says that it was the Lord who caused them to be taken away to that place. What is the first principle that I want to share? Pauline, don't, don't, don't stand there. Come, come to the front. You're also a preacher. Stand. Come to the front. You see, as children of God, as children of God, there is nothing that can happen to you without the permission of God. The church is quiet. As a child of God, there is nothing that can happen to you without the permission of God. You see, as human as we are, when we are going through certain stages in life, when we are at certain levels, and it looks like the whole world is caving in on us, we begin to question, we begin to we begin to, what's the English word, flat. You know, we begin to agitate. We begin to, eh, and that is why we will continue with That is why even sometimes certain wicked people take advantage of us. I'll get there. You see, nothing, when you accept that, nothing can happen to you without the permission of God. When you accept that, and when you are walking through any situation, the peace of God will keep you. Because the scripture is saying that I know the thoughts which I have for you. Go to verse 11. Go there. And I want you to follow. He said, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace. And you have said that the word peace also means prosperity. He said, Thoughts of prosperity and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. To give you a future and a hope. These are people that had been taken to places, and I'm sure they were not enjoying the place at all. But God was saying that He brought them there. And He's saying that because it is He that led them there, He's saying that His thought for them is a thought of peace, is a thought of prosperity. I was speaking to one of our brothers. And he was telling me a story how he came here. He said that uh, an agent told him that, you know, there's a place, he, he had not even heard of the name Qatar before. He said there's a, a place called Qatar. And I know that that is the story of most of us. There's a place called Qatar. When you go, you'll find a very nice job. In fact, I'm going to give you a very nice job. And you're going to earn $2,000. 
Yeah. And he said, okay, I will go. And then he came. And when he came, the salary is 2000 But the currency is different. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same 2000, but the currency is different. And that guy had become so depressed. He had become, and that's the story of a lot of people. Some of us, when we're coming, they told us we're coming to earn $900. So when you do the conversion to Kenyan shillings, you're like, my God, by the time I leave in two years, I'll have a lot of money. And you get it is 900 but it is something real. It is real. And it's making you depressed. A lot of us are walking in depression. We look at the circumstances and it's like, what is this? What have I gotten myself into? But I came to announce to you that those who did not see it, the Lord said, it is the And he's saying that, just relax. Yeah. He's saying that his peace is with you. His prosperity is with you. It is not about where you are and what you are doing. It is who is with you. And the Bible says that if the Lord be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? Hallelujah. Read the verse 11 in, in, so that our Kenyan friends will understand. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I want, I want you to sing in your spirit. I want it to so if you don't live here today with anything, remember that scripture. That the Lord is saying that the thoughts that He has for you is thoughts of peace. To give you an expected help. Don't lose hope. Read it for us. Mr. Pauline. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, let's listen to Swahili. You will not hear Swahili before. Let's listen to scriptures. Help us. <laughs> Nibu Paroni, non in Niki Joe in Pagoya, Nibu Pagaya, Tiao Mania Rena, Nibu Pagoya, Maldoma Nima, Nima Pagaya, Susay. Hallelujah. All that she read, I'm interpreting it for you. All that she read is that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. And that is what you need. What you need is for the Lord to be with you. Amen. Yeah. When Joseph was taken away into captivity, the Bible says that everything that he did was prosperous. Why? Because the Lord was with him. The Lord was with him. Don't, don't, don't be, be discouraged. Don't lose hope. Yeah. Hey, the church is quiet. Now, let's go back to verse 5. So that's the first principle. Thank you, my sister. That's the first principle. Now the second principle that I want you to, you see, these were people in the foreign land. But look at what the Lord told them. He said, build houses in that place. He said, build houses. What did he say? Plant gardens and eat their food. You see, these were people that God had even promised them that he was going to take them away back into their city. But he still told them that build houses, build houses, plant gardens. You see, building a house talks of contributing to the development of that city. Because when you build a house, when the Lord is taking them away, what will happen? They will not carry the house with them. They are going to leave the house behind in that place. But God still encouraged them. You see, God have, could have told them that buy chariots. You know, in those days, chariots were the, like the cats. You know, things that you could sit in and travel with. But he said, build houses. You see, I'm going to call one of our brothers again. They are always trying to do a teaching so that you can follow. But I call. Last week I used to. This week also, I'm going to use you. Please put our hands together for him. But I call. One more time. Please come. Houses. You see, because of the situation, sometimes, whatever, you when you came to Qatar, what was your job? You were a cleaner. You were a cleaner. 
You were cleaning what? What were some of the things you were cleaning? Um, actually, we were cleaning hotels. Uh -huh. And uh, finally, I ended myself with the one I'm very office. Okay. So that's where God blessed me. Hallelujah. How did the Lord bless him? Give, give me the microphone. You see, he was a cleaner. Hmm? Sometimes, because of the, the situation, all right, we don't want to give our best. All right? This gentleman was a cleaner. He would clean, and it would be so clean. <laughs> he would clean, and it would be so clean. To the extent that when he's not around, and then another person comes to clean, they question whether he's been cleaned or not. They will question you, is that not the case? It's happened. Yeah. They will say, why did you two clean my yeah, office? So what happened was, um, that very day, I didn't clean the office of my boss, uh -huh. but I asked one guy to, because I had another job to do over there. So when my boss came, he was like, Fred, you didn't clean my office today. I said, say it was clean. He said, yes, I know it's clean. Yeah, it was clean, but it wasn't so clean. <laughs> And based on that diligence, doing it well, what happened to where are you now? Yeah, now I work with the man I'm very. Uh, he works with very the much in the in the uh, Amir's yacht. Yeah, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. The yacht. That is where he works now. Hallelujah. Um, listen, I want to when when the Lord places you, number one, you need to accept. Okay? You need to accept that this is what the Lord has given me. Now. And I'm going to make absolute good use of it. Whatever I need to do, eh, I'm going to do my best. You know, there's a check that says that if it must be done, it must be done. It must be done. You see, this attitude of non permanence has entered even into the church. Has entered into the church. You see, there are a lot of people. You see, one thing I ask myself, I'm not going to be here forever. You're not going to be here forever. My sister, you're going to be here forever. No. If you think like that, you are kidding yourself. <laughs> you're not going to be here forever. But when you leave the choir, when you leave the choir, the choir must be better than when you join. If you leave, let me see there are some people say, when I leave, they will miss me, pa. They will miss me. They don't respect me now. When I leave, my God, they will miss me. They will know that I was important. It means that, you see, you are disobeying that structure. You are not thinking of, you are not building houses. Yeah. So when you leave, it's like, it's gone. What are you doing? You see, look at this church. Look at this beautiful place. We come, we share fellowship. Right? Some people, when they came, though they knew that they will be leaving, they were thinking of permanence. They were thinking of building a place for you. So that when you come, because they know that when you come, you need a place of fellowship. You need a family to belong to. You need some people that share the same faith with you. They sacrificed. Yeah. One of them is here. <laughs> they sacrificed. When the new executives were coming to play, you were being inaugurated, one of them shared the story. How they started in one of in, in, in one of the residences, isn't it? Yeah. And they moved here. They were paying themselves. Thinking they know that they're not going to be here. In the new executive, the founders, you know, there's zero. There's no person who started the church who is now a leader in the church. But they thought of us. They thought that there, there, there will be some brothers who will come. Ten years after them. Seven years after them, but we want to build a house. Well, when they come, they will have a place to stay. Yeah. 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 You want a chariot where you yourself can occupy and then drive around and enjoy. Enjoy the fame. Like I'm preaching and you are clapping for me and I'm happy. And I'm like, oh, so when I leave, nobody can preach. I, I am not building a house. I'm not thinking about the prosperity of the people that will come after me. You see, the reason why a lot of us, we want to be prosperous, but the Lord cannot trust us 
without prosperity is because you think about three people. Only three people. It's me, myself, and I. Three colors. It's me, myself, and I. That's it. You don't think of any other thing. And that has been the problem with many of our countries where we come from. Hey, they are quiet. Yes. You are coming to criticize our president. Yes. <laughs> I'm preaching. <laughs> when they come, they think about three people: me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. I pray that may that that spirit may we not enter the church. May we not enter the church. Oh yes, oh yes. So the question that you need to ask yourself: What are you doing to make sure that the house is built? What are you doing? And I'm telling you, your prosperity is linked to the prosperity of the city. Yeah. We think that when we are prosperous, he said that, seek the prosperity of the city. He said that in the prosperity of the city, you shall also be prosperous. Yeah. A lot of us, we, we want to go to Canada, we want to go to America, we want to go to certain places. Why? It's not because you know a rich man there. But because you know that the city is prosperous. And you know that when you connect yourself with that prosperous city, you shall also be prosperous. When you make the church prosperous, you shall also be prosperous. Yeah. When you make the church prosperous, you shall also be prosperous. Hallelujah. That is what we are talking about. The prosperity. The light of our path, our shield, and our buckle. Father, this afternoon, your children once again, we want to say thank you in Jesus' name. That Lord, you have met each and every one at our point of need. Father Lord, 
even as we depart from your sanctuary, we are not departing from your presence. And so, Father, we decided to start prayer this afternoon that, Lord, you be with us this week. Lord, you let your arm of mercy surround us, Lord. Your protection be upon us. Father, your provisions be our portion. Lord, you surround us with your peace and your blessings and your prosperity. That, Lord, it does not just end with us, but, Father, it will extend to our family, to our children, to our children's children. Almighty God, may we know each and every day your goodness that so abounds upon our lives. So, Father Lord, we are all going to say to share together the grace as we depart from your presence. So, as one body we say together, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, your goodness and mercy are all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell forever and ever. Let's go in peace, and the Lord be with you. If you gave your life to the Lord this afternoon, please come forward and see Reverend Harry.